It's difficult for me to critique the Hosanna Choir, but you have heard many choir songs. If I were to critique them, it sounds like I'm comparing them to someone else. But they have worked so hard, and each member sitting here today, there's a lot, uh, there's some of them that are quite aged, yet they give all that they have to praise God. More important than the lyrics and the rhythm, it's just how hard they work and how they try to serve God in, through their praise. Even in this midst of difficult difficulties with the coronavirus, as you look around, we see many people wearing masks. Don't you think that it's a time where we can get rid of all these masks and live freely? So today's title is God Who Brings About Change. So during this eventful year of 2022, there's only 14 days left in this year. We are, without ceasing, we are charging towards this new upcoming year of 2023. So we think, a lot of us think, well, how does this week go by so fast? So today on this Blessed and Holy Lord's Day, we are so thankful to God that we are able to greet, meet each other and come here very healthy. So maybe last week you ate with somebody or you saw them just a few days ago and you cannot meet them today. Why? Because of misfortunes. Yet each of us here, even though we're in the midst of some difficulties, we are healthy and we have come all here today. We need to give thanks to God. So using today's scripture reading of Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 13, what is it saying? It's saying those who return to the Lord, no matter what type of sin they have committed, if they just repent, God will change all their miseries into joyful, peaceful, and blessed circumstances. So through this message, I uh, decided to title this message, God Who Brings About Change. You and I have to be changed. Our anxious hearts to peace. Our saddened hearts to refreshing hearts. For those who sinned in the past, we're all human. There is no one without sin. Without God's sovereign hand to watch over us, how can we not sin? Even if we don't want to sin, we commit sin. We all make determinations or new resolutions, but it doesn't last but a couple of days. So through today's message, we have to realize that we must submit ourselves before God. In uh, the, the nation of Greece, there is a city called uh, Syracuse, and there was a king named Heron, but he had uh, lots of doubts. In order to look good in front of others, he wanted to get a golden crown made for him. So he gets a piece of gold and he gives it to the goldsmith. And he tells the goldsmith, don't, don't waste any of this gold, but use this whole piece of gold to make my golden crown. So now after time had passed, this goldsmith came to the king and gave him the golden crown. However, this king, he was not very welcome about receiving this golden crown. And he looks at the at the goldsmith with doubt, thinking, did this did this goldsmith really use every last ounce of this gold for this crown or did he take some out and use it for something else? So he never said, thank you for your hard work, but leave it there and leave. He was not welcoming about his new crown. So now this goldsmith, what do you think he thought? It was the king's command. Why would he have stolen a little piece of gold for himself? So he didn't sleep, and he worked day and night to make this for the king. 
Yet the king is not thankful at all. And then there was also a great mathematician in Greece. You probably already know him, Archimedes. And now this goldsmith, because he was so upset about this, he went and found this mathematician, Archimedes. And he told them what had happened, that he gave all that he had to make this golden crown. Yet this king thinks that I took away some of the gold and used it for myself. So could you please, could you please explain on my behalf and uh, fix this misunderstanding? So this mathematician, day in, day out, thinks about it, but he did not come to a resolution. And then one day he was so tired, we see that he goes into the, the bathtub inside his house. And he realizes that every time he goes in, the water would f overflow. And then he realized he solved this problem, the king's problem, whether this goldsmith had taken gold for himself or not. And he was so happy that he found this problem that he ran out saying, Eureka, Eureka, in the streets of Greece. This mathematician, this great mathematician, was running through the streets, screaming Eureka in his bare body. What does this mean, Eureka? It means, I have it, I found it. it means he found the answer. So this is also called the principle of buoyancy, the law of Archimedes. So when you place an I item inside the uh, water, we see it floats, right? So 300 years before Archimedes, we see that the prophet Isaiah in our scripture reading is saying, or, or giving us this principle of buoyancy. So, in other words, it means it was a God that changes. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 13, it says that it will change the thorn bush to juniper, and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. So, Isaiah 55 is the last chapter, and God is speaking of the final stage of salvation. In order, what does it mean for me to have salvation fulfilled in my life? The, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah is explaining this clearly. He's saying that God is a God that works through change. Seeing, saying that God doesn't just change, or I mean, doesn't just fix what's uh, broken, but God changes. He changes to new things. And this is what the prophet Isaiah was teaching us. The thorn bushes and briars, these are things that grow inside the wilderness, but it doesn't provide any shade and it doesn't get, it's not sustainable food. In the wilderness, it doesn't give any comfort to the human. However, this thorn bush and the briars, it says that God will take them out and he, he uh, will restore it with things that we are able to eat. Juniper myrtle, we see it, it's pretty to look at and it's also edible. In our scripture reading, is showing us uh, the background of the Israelites during the Babylonian captivity. We see that because of their sin and disobedience to God, Israel, the Israelites were taken captive to a foreign land, which was Babylon. And this message that Isaiah, our scripture reading is today, is 60 years after they have been taken captive. So now to these people, what hope is left? They've been captive for 60 years. 
if it were maybe one or two years or at most three or four years after captivity, if they would have heard this message, it would be hopeful. They were now shedding many tears of pain and hardship. We see they were slaves forced into labor. So many of them probably thought it was better off to die. So 60 years have passed, and there was no message of freedom. Yet we see Isaiah, he comes, and he proclaims this message of hope. Isaiah proclaims, it's not true. We may be like the thorn bushes in the wilderness right now, but God is going to change us to the pine tree and the pomegranates. So now these Israelites, hearing these words, their eyes are widened and they ask themselves, could this really be true? Could this really happen? So those who listened, or those, how could you not listen to the words of Isaiah? We see that these hearts of hardship were changed to happiness and peace, Sad, sadness to happiness. So who is going to go against these words of Isaiah? The prophecy and the words of Isaiah came true. We see later, 10 years later, through uh, during the reign of King Cyrus, these Israelites were freed and returned to their homeland. So though those 60 years these six years were painful and hard. These remaining 10 years were, were short, right? And many of them probably spoke and said, look at what happened, just as Isaiah said, these words of happiness. So no matter what situation, don't lose hope and don't fall into despair because God will change. This is a great blessing. When we look at the book of Judges, we see Samson one day in the valley. He meets a lion. And we see that the, the power of God comes upon Samson where he's able to tear this lion apart. And after he went on his way, when he returned, he saw that the lion that he had killed, there was a swarm of bees in there. And now we're making honey. So Samson takes his hand and eats this honey. And this became a riddle. Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. This riddle. He gave this riddle to the Philistines. They have no idea how to solve this riddle. It's different from normal riddles. However, there is an issue. The woman is the problem. The, the secrets of your workplace or your family, if she should never, if you told your wife this, she should never tell anyone else. There is no way the Philistines would have known the answer. But they came to Samson's wife, brought her gifts, and bribed her and kept telling her to find out the answer to the riddle or we will f uh, set fire to your house and kill you. And eventually she did find out what was the result or the end result of Samson. He's saying, if you had not plowed my wife, you would not have known. This is in uh, Judges 14 verse 18 and I. So death brings despair, but we see even in this despair, God changes it to honey, which is sweet. So though we may be uh, going through a lot of difficulties, and it seems like we've lost hope, there's no light that is even able to come through the eye of a needle. 
And a lot of people in the world are looking towards suicide because they find no way out. Just as Samson destroyed this fierce lion and ate honey out of it, even though Satan is coming against you with all he has, help us re remember to live your faith like honey. In the Old and New Testament, we see it is the message of creation. We see that in Genesis chapter 1, darkness was turned into light. And also in uh, Revelation chapter 21 and 22, we see that God is going to change this terrible world into heaven and all these places of tears into happiness and death into eternal life. How satisfying is this? Each of us who believe this in our Evergreen Hill Church, I believe that each of us believe this. Faith is believing that God will change me. God will change the world. God will change this church. It is believing this type of God. So in the Bible, what is sin? We see if you are against God's changing you, that is sin. When he calls you, you should answer. But if you turn your back against God and don't answer him, this is sin. And this is the uh, sin of disbelief. I don't want to be changed. I want to live the way I am right now. If you say this, it is sin. When you come to church, God is saying he will change you. Your thoughts, your personality, your character. God, through his word, is going to change you to a new. Yet we are so stubborn in our family. Because of our family teachings, the teachings we received at school, the things we have seen and learned, we don't want to change from those. God is saying he's going to change us, yet we refuse. God is saying he will change us without a payment. And the Apostle Paul calls this blessing. Look at the Apostle Paul. He was in the forefront of persecuting and killing Christians, those who believed in Jesus. He was in the forefront of killing Deacon Stephen. He's the one who went to the synagogue and said that he will be in charge of catching all those Jesus believers. He was the one in the forefront that persecuted all the believers of Jesus. And what did God do to Paul? And he changed his name from uh, Saul to Paul. God changed his outer person and his inner person. Because of his change and transformation, he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that you are a new creation in God. And he says that God's grace had changed him. Saying, it's not I who did it, but it is the grace that is with me, the grace of God. And this is in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. So Isaiah chapter 5 begins this way. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. We see the dry wilderness is changed into a paradise abundant with vegetation. Through today's message, believe that God is able to do this change. The prayer of St. Francis is what is being praised a lot in Korea. This prayer is, where is there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. 
where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. This was the prayer of St. Francis offering to God. God has promised to change us. Are we crazy? If God is not going to change us, why would we come and spend our time here and our money here and pray to God? Those who believe and pray to God believe that there was there will be a new work of change. And therefore, in uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 23, it says, Everything is possible for the one who believes. And also in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. If we don't believe in God and we keep using our own demise, our whole life will not change. It will remain the same. Even though I try not to hate, is there not hatred within us? If we have hatred in our hearts, then everything is in vain. When we change our hatred, God gives us love then the Bible tells us that our, our uh, situations or our problems will be, will be corrected. When we forgive others, that is when God's grace will work strongly in your life and solve your problems. Every other problem you have, we have to change our disbelief and ha with faith. We can't believe just because we want to. Understanding the Word of God and being submissive to it, it's hard to do. So what should we do? A lot of us say we have been Christians since birth, yet maybe we're 60 years old, 70 years old, but we still have our old thoughts, our old personalities. We just act like we're believers, but we're not true believers because we have not changed. This light of hope that God shines upon my dark heart, the light is the Word of God. That Word of God is life, and this light is shining upon people. So the Word of God, which is the light, when it comes into our heart, our life comes into us. That life is also said to be light. And that light shines upon our improper thoughts and it casts out that darkness. And then we realize what grace is. We receive grace and then we change according to God's wish. So please believe this. And therefore, Apostle Paul says, do not fall prey to evil, but overcome it. And Romans chapter 12, verse 21 says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You have to overcome evil with good. So God's righteousness with God's word and be awake and pray and receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit and live according to the word. Through that word, we receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit and all things are possible then. So until we receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, we have to be fervent in evangelism and also in prayer. How thankful we should be to God who changes us. In John chapter 3, verses 3 to 7, we have to be redeemed through the uh, water and spirit. God has promised us to change our bodies to a new body also. This corruptible body, perishable body. We are existences made of dust. But what does the Bible tell us? It says he will sow what is imperishable to perishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. 
Those sown in weakness will be raised in power. Those sown with a natural body will be raised a spiritual body. So there is a natural body and there is also a spiritual body. This is in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 42 to 44. Then in verse 50, it says, Brothers and sisters, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. This is the blessing that is promised to us until verse 56. So this perishable body, he got, God says he will change it into an imperishable body that will live for eternity. Please believe this word. Please repeat after me. It will happen according to your faith. It will happen according to your faith. You have to say it loudly. <laughs> Speak loudly. So you and I are given this body by God. Are you keeping it clean? Are you living so that you do not receive shame? But God is saying he's going to change us into a glorious body. You and I, we have not taken care of our bodies in our daily life. When God sees us, God says he sent us our bodies to this earth. How many times has he said to you, I'm so happy that you have fulfilled my will and lived according to my word. God is saying he will change our bodies into glorious bodies, our weak bodies into strong bodies, and our perishable bodies into the imperishable. We have to bow our heads before this promise of God and realize that this message that is being proclaimed in Isaiah 55 will come to pass. We have to believe on this earth so that we will believe in heaven. How can you say amen, hallelujah, and believe in the heaven when you don't believe in God's word today? So today is our new beginning. All we think about is our failures. You think about, oh, because of that person. I've lost so much money. Why did that person come into my house? Why did I become acquainted with this person? I've been swindled by this person. Or my, my, uh, my family has become dirty because of this person. So think, forget about everything in the past. Why? Because we are new creations through Christ. So God is saying there are no enemies. You should not have any enemies. How can you love your enemy? We may say that with our lips, but it's so hard to live it out. That person has caused so much trouble for my family and caused so much hardship. But just like Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, if you and I are crucified in Christ on the cross, then we, with the faith of Christ, are able to overcome this enemy. Without crucifying ourselves to the cross with Jesus, we cannot love our enemy. We don't even want to look at them, right? If you look at John chapter 5, we see at the pool of Bethesda, there was this lame man who was uh, crippled for 38 years. He had never walked in his life. Jesus comes to him and says, Do you want to be made well? And this man says, Yes, I do. So every time the angel comes down and stirs the water, I have not been able to get into the water. How can he jump into the water if he's lame? Imagine how hard he probably tried to get into the water, but he could not do it with his own strength. And Jesus says what? He says, rise, take up your bed and walk. And he was submissive and obedient to that word. He believed that word. And this God, believe in this God who changes. It is, things are impossible with man. 
38 years he was lame. Just think about laying down for three years and eight months instead. When you wake up or when you try to get up, you cannot. Your legs are so weak and you are so uh, dizzy. But when God comes to you and comforts you and gives you strength and pulls you, it is impossible. But only God can change us. My bad personality, my evil thoughts, all these will be changed with God. All of our problems, our worries, or what kind of wishes do you have? Hold on to God who changes and believe. Say amen to the words that God has proclaimed. John, uh, Genesis chapter 22, look at the faith of Abraham on Mount Moriah. He was given the command to what? To sacrifice his son. The God who changed his heart and changed death into life is the God that you and I believe. It is the work of blessings and new beginnings. So just like the hymn says, in cottage or a mansion fair, wherever Jesus is, tis heaven there. If we believe like this, then our families will be changed. Our daughters and sons, our husbands, our wives, everyone will be changed. Through faith, all of our circumstances will be changed through God's blessing. Beloved, today through, through today's message, we have learned that the old will be changed into new and I pray this blessing upon each and every one of you let us pray Father God we thank you today and now we only have two weeks left in this remaining year and there are many things that our saints must complete all this disbelief that we have had in our hearts we ask that you would change it to new so that in the new year we will have faith that will be acknowledged by you and that you will be happy that we have uh, fulfilled the mission that you have sent each of us here to complete all these difficulties that we have in our lives may you change them into good just as the new the sun rises every day help each of us to worship god in our lives daily we thank you for all these things and pray with thanksgiving in the name of jesus christ our lord amen